the oo sound. First declension is the ah sound. We have the a sound. It's repeated over and over again in this. You will actually notice that there are some similarities to first declension, and I'll show that, make them clear to you as we go through. So reis, re is thing. Does anybody know a word that, uh, it's a Latin word that we get re from reis? It's a little tricky, but reis publica. Yes. Uh, it's, it's a, it, it's a bad guess, but is it, does the word Rex come? Um, they could be related. I don't think so as, as much, but race, race publica. What sounds, does that sound like? It sounds very familiar. It sounds like the people, it's something about the people. I know. Very good. You're so close. You're very, very, very close with it. Republic, exactly. So literally, literally what the Republic is. Res publica is the people's thing, is, is all that means. Very, very interesting when we break it down in that way. But that's all that means, the res publica, the people's thing. Right? It, it, it kind of takes away all the magic and mystery of that word when we know that, but this is one of these words. And that's why, well, I mean, race and re, this is a, a very common word as well that you're going to find in, in Latin that would be combined with other words like race publica. And uh, so it is It is important as much as the fifth declension is, there's a smaller group of words. These are words that are used often enough. So let's, uh, let's just go through. Um, Yes, yes. So res, let's go through. Uh, nominative and vocatives are the same in this, right? Only in the second declension is that ever going to be any different. So res, re, re, rem, recusative, and re for ablative. And then in the plural, res, rerum, rebus, res, rebus. So you can notice there are some similar patterns going on here. If we go back and we think of the first declension, right? Porta, portai, portai. Ah, they're the same together again, just like the second declension or the first declension, sorry, right? The feminine declension. So it is following certain trends that we did see long ago in first uh, declension, which as you guys will remember, first declension is mainly feminine. This is also a feminine declension in that sense. And even the rem, right? I, as I've said before, the accusative tends to have an M at the end of it. It tends to be that way. It's not always that way, but this is a reoccurring theme that goes on. And we have erum, uh, right? Uh, but if we go back once again, first declension, arum, and then second declension, orum. Right? So there are repeated things going on with them. There are five different categories, but they do have similar things to them, similar sounds to keep repeating. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, the ebus. Instead, we have with this ebus. So... As time goes on, it does become a little bit more natural to your ears and to your eyes to pick up these. So, and then the only time it's ever going to be different with, um, oh, it should say day. I don't know why it says thing there. I'll fix that for you guys later. But this is day. It's not thing. Does anybody know a word that we get from this? Days for day. Think of a word in English that comes from this. Yes, the word day definitely comes from this, but there's an object that we, not, not everybody, but many people have one of these objects. No, it's not dice. But that's a good guess. Think about something that's very personal to you, something you wouldn't want to show everybody. That you write in, you write in this. Yes, diary, exactly. 
So the word diary comes from this, right? So it's your days, literally, is what the, um, the root of that means. So there's a little bit of difference in this, not a crazy amount of difference. The main difference that we have with them is right here. If we have two long vowels, which is not a common thing that you'll see in Latin where there's two long vowels, but it does happen with a few different words. So des, dei, dei, deum, dei, dies, dierum, diebus, dies, diebus, right? So it's not so different. Mainly how long we hold uh, these vowels for is a little different. But other than that, it's very similar to the other. So we only have a few words that we'll, we'll look at with this. Um, he, so we've already had, um, I don't know why it says say, goodness, I'm making all kinds of mistakes. Should say day here as well. We have uh, fides and fidei. This is faith or, or um, uh, kind of a fidelity as well it comes from this. Any other words we think of? There's a name that comes from this, actually. Yes, the name Fido definitely comes from this. Fido is he's def he's your faithful dog, is what he is. That's what the word means for uh, Fido. So yes, that name does come from this. And fidelity, um, and then the word faith in general, it comes from this as well. So once again, it's very um, uh, it's very good. And then we have res as we've already covered. And then, uh, oops, space and spay comes from this as well, uh, from this declension as well. And this is uh, hope. Yes, yes, it does, right? Uh, respect does come from, from race. Um, and uh, space, uh, we, we have a few words, uh, words like special come from this. Um, no, no, not not race in that sense comes from this. I don't believe, but it is a very good guess still. Okay, so oh, yes, we should just keep moving on so we can finish our our chapter here. All right, so we're continuing on talking about uh, Regina's funeral here. So we're going to go through. I'll read the. Uh, the um, comic in Latin for everyone, and then we will go through, have them translated, and we'll uh, read the, the next few pages of this last, or second last chapter, sorry. So, Candidus, Flavius, and Lepidina arrive in a Boracum, where Baretes is preparing for Regina's funeral. Baretes cornun, uh, cornonam porta. Lavius et Lucredum portat lepidina anulum portat. Sculptor tiltilum splendidum sculpit. And after Regina's body has been cremated, her bones are collected and put into a pot. The pot is then put into a pit with other items which Regina may need in the next world. Lavius et, et lepidina. Luceram et anulam in olam de poridum. Paretes coronam in spirculum pontit. Okay, so we have this here. We have uh, the funeral itself going on here. So we're having all kinds of different little rituals that are happening. So if anybody wants to start with the first, we'll. Uh, We'll go to all right. All right, this holds the wreath. Yes, Lavius holds the lamp. Lepidinus holds the ring. Yes, very good. Okay. Yes. And size look. Yes. Okay. So, um, what is the third panel? Got what's going on there? he doing? 
Well, we have a word here that is pretty uh, pretty similar to a world that we have uh, in in English. With sculptor. What do you think he's doing? If he's a sculptor, he's got to be doing something. Right, he's sculpting, right? He's sculpting something. Yes, he inscribes, he car carves splendidly. And this was an important thing. It was, was an important job that people did. And people, there have been people who did it better than others. This kind of a fun thing to see um, is where sometimes people, and we all make this mistake sometimes, where we write our letters a little bit too big and we continue to write them very, very big. And then we're almost running out of space and then we have to make the letters smaller. There are actually uh, carvings and inscriptions that are done in this way. Um, where somebody didn't really plan out how, how much space they had. And it's kind of fun. So, yes. Um, so what is the fifth? Fifth panel. So, Flavius et Lepidina et Lucanam et Anulam and Aulam. So they're putting things somewhere. They so they're putting things down. Yes, they put them down into a pot, right? Into the, um, yes, deposit. And uh, deponent are two words that come from uh, depunbund. Yes, very, very good. So that's good. So they're doing that. And then Barretes, he places the wreath onto the tomb, right? And then her ashes are going to be put into the ground. So this is a very typical kind of uh, funeral uh, um, ritual that's done for people. And it's not just typical this in Roman times, but it's also very uh, similar to other cultures at the time. Ancient Egyptians did similar things, placing different items that people liked within the ground for them. And uh, even, even still today, some of these, these traditions are done by certain people. Who, um, who are at a funeral, all right? So um, we'll read the next spot over here. Um, so it says, have another look at the sentences in Latin story in each one. All right, so we can, uh, I think, skip over this. So, so we make sure we have the time to go through all of the next two pages. Uh, I think that we have uh, said some of this, but we'll talk a little bit more in detail as well today. So the Romans believed that it was very important, as well as the Greeks, this is true for them as well, to bury their dead correctly. And correctly is the big thing in this. Following certain customs to ensure that the spirit of the dead person would rest at peace in the next world. In the early Roman times, bodies were usually cremated. The ashes were then put into containers made of glass or lead. Later, burial became more common. And especially when Christianity became the main religion of Rome, this became almost exclusively what people were doing for the dead. Um, the body was usually put inside a coffin, was placed inside a burial mound. Things which the dead person might need in the world, such as food, next world, such as food and drink, would be placed into the container of ashes or into the coffin. And I think somebody put, uh, spoke a little bit about this last time. Sometimes a small coin was placed on the dead person's tongue. The Romans believed that when they arrived at the underworld, they had to cross the river Styx. They would be rowed by Charon, the ferryman. The coin was to pay the fare, right? They were to pay him 
as they were going across. And if they didn't have that coin, they would be uh, they would be out of luck. They wouldn't be able to go across. They would be stuck. Uh, 